skins. 50 wear pigs. Cooked. 150 piggy skin. Don't starve together is the game. And the aim? I mean, it's literally in the title. Do not starve. This fire farm is insane because you can put any creature in the fire farm, such as bunny men, pigs, wear pigs, and it works with all of them. Meaning, uh, it kills like up to 50 of them. <laughs> <laughs> but how? how? How does the fire farm work so well? And how do you build it? Well, that's what we're gonna answer in the remaining time in this video. Wait, what the? There's someone in my oven! What's up gamers? It's your boy, Banjo the Business Pig, back at it again. Now this oven might be hot, but it's not quite as hot as my wife. <laughs> Now listen to me gamers, there's actually no sponsor in this video, so I'm just gonna shout out Jakey's Twitch because he's doing a charity stream this Saturday, the 22nd of October, so be there or be square. Okay, goodbye. So before we get started, a quick disclaimer. First of all, I did not invent the concept of using an oven to cook creatures alive. So here's where the inspiration came from. Firstly, I saw it in James Bucket's video a while back where he cooked some juvenile aves in an oven. And secondly, Jazzy Games' oven from his fire farm video. And after I was inspired by both of these designs, I built my own fire farm and tested the mechanics of every aspect of the fire farm and improved the design to create the masterpiece that I present to you here today. Alright, let's start with how did these lupine swines even die in the intro? Well, let me introduce to you Fire damage. Fire damage is a low but rapid damage that you begin taking after being close to an open fire source for about two and a half seconds This damage continues until you're a certain distance away from the fire source How far away do you need to be to stop the fire damage? Well, that depends on the fire. Small fires from things like mini signs have a range of two wall units So if it's placed in the center of a tile, then the range of the fire damage will be the entire tile except Except the four wall units in each corner, so the radius of the fire damage kind of looks like a cross. And we will remember this for later. Now when I say wall unit, I mean the unit of space that is used up when you place a wall, like a stone wall. Also larger fires like from trees and scarecrows have a bigger range than smaller fires. Okay great, so we need to make the pigs take fire damage, but there's one problem. When pigs and other creatures are taking fire damage, they run around randomly! Which means they can run away from the fire and if they get too far, they'll stop taking fire damage. And we can't just set the pigs on fire because then they're drops get burnt. So how do we solve this? Well, it's simple. We stop the pig's escape by building an enclosed area that will cool it as James Bucket did. The oven. This way they cannot run away. Also, we'll stuff enough other piggies in the oven so that each pig cannot move, which will keep them close to the fire source so they can't avoid the damage. For reference, one pig takes up about one wool unit worth of space, and each tile has 16 wool units, so you can fit at least 16 pigs per tile interior. Okay, but how much damage does fire damage actually do? Well, after being close to the fire source for two and a half seconds, the fire damage begins, at which point small fires do about 5.5 DPS per fire source, roughly. Bigger fires like from scarecrows and trees do more damage per second, about 9 damage per second, but unlike scarecrows, mini signs can be stacked, meaning multiple fire sources can be stacked on top of each other. Also, for the rest of the video, when I say fire damage, I'm referring to the small fire's fire damage, like from mini signs. Mini signs can be crafted for one board for a return of four of these arson tools, and and you can place them on the ground basically anywhere since their hitbox, like my height, is very tiny. <laughs> But wait, a wear pig has 525 health, which means it needs to take one source of fire damage for 94 seconds before it will die. But we killed 50 wear pigs in less than 10 seconds at the beginning of the video, so how did we do so much damage in such little time? You know how I said mini signs have tiny hitboxes? The hitboxes are so small that you can just place each mini sign on top of another one, which means in one singular spot you can have stacking fire damage. But mini signs burn to ash if they're left burning for 10 seconds, but we don't want them to burn to ash, so to make sure they don't burn to ash, we'll extinguish them after they've been burning for 8 seconds. But ice flingomatics take 1 or 2 seconds to start up and extinguish fires, so to time this correctly, once the first mini signs set fire, we'll count to 6, turn on the flingomatic, which will put the fire out before the mini signs have been burning for 8 seconds. Perfect. Ready yourselves gamers, because it's time for some math. If a wear pig has 525 health and fire damage deals 5.57 damage per second, and we want to kill the wear pig in less than 6 seconds, how many fire sources do we need to use? to introduce enough damage per second. And remember, it takes two and a half seconds before the pigs begin to take damage. Did you, did you think, did you answer yet? No? Well, uh, keep the answer in your head, let's find out. So let's assume we have 10 mini signs. Using this formula, we can calculate that the wear pig will now die in 9.42 seconds once they start taking fire damage, which takes two and a half seconds, so a total time of 11.92 seconds. That's not fast enough because the mini signs burn out after 10 seconds. So how about 30 mini signs? Well, now we calculate the wear pig will 
will die in 3.14 seconds plus the 2.5 second startup time, so a total of 5.64 seconds. Perfect. With this knowledge, we will use 30 mini signs. You can add more mini signs to each stack, it will just mean the weapons pigs die a little bit faster, but the more fires you have, the laggier your world might get when you once you set fire to the mini signs. Alright, let's start the building process. First of all, camera angle. Make sure your map is rotated in a way where the tiles are squares and not diamonds. This will match my camera angle. Also, here's a screenshot of my geometric placements mod settings if you wanted to copy them. The entire farm's interior is 12 tiles across and 6 tiles tall. The oven will be at the front center of the enclosure, and the oven's interior is 3 tiles across and only one tile tall. But the three tiles across is actually two tiles and then two half tiles to make sure it's centered relative to the whole enclosure. We're going to build the oven first before the rest of the enclosure. Before placing all of the walls around the oven, we first need to put down the ice flinger mag. We needed to put out the fires and ice flinger mag's collision is big, so we've got to put it down before the walls, otherwise it won't fit afterwards. The position of the ice flinger mag is the center bottom of the oven and then counts down by two small units like I am doing on screen. Next, we're going to put down the walls to surround the oven along with the gates. Remember, we want the interior of the oven to be three tiles across and one tile high, so we need to place the walls one wall unit outside of the interior tiles. Then we need two sets of gates up here to let the pigs into the oven, and one gate at the bottom for us to go through. Now, depending on if you put the gates before or after the walls, they appear to be placed closer or further away from the oven, but the collision is the same, so it doesn't matter. Now we're going to put a fence around the rest of the entire enclosure, which is 12 tiles across and six tiles high, and a set of gates or two so you can access the enclosure without having to go through the oven. The area around the oven will be dangerous and could set fire so I've marked the area with carpet and checkered flooring uh, and later on I do expand this area by another tile in radius and the rest of the enclosure is marked with deciduous and blank turf so it's easier to see the tiles. You might have noticed when the pigs are in the enclosure it's very packed tight so it'd be hard to ignite the mini signs because you know you can't see them. So we're gonna place a scarecrow because it's a tool structure which is easy to click on and you can set fire to it with a fire staff and also since it counts as a big fire it will spread the fire to nearby mini signs quite fast. The scarecrow should be placed directly in the center of the oven like this. Now for the mini signs we need to pack the mini sign stacks close enough together so that every creature in the oven will take fire damage. If we remember the fire damage radius of mini signs is two wall units horizontally and vertically so if the mini signs in the center of the tile it looks like a cross. So we need five stacks of mini signs with three small units between each stack. The first stack should be directly underneath the scarecrow like this. It can be hard to place them under the scarecrow, but with a diagonal camera and a steady mouse, you can place them. Then once you've placed 30 mini signs below the scarecrow, you're going to count four small units to the right, and then place another 30 mini signs on the fourth small unit. Count four more small units to the right and place another 30 mini signs, then repeat, but for the opposite side of the scarecrow. And bam, we now have five stacks of mini signs, with each stack having 30 mini signs. And all the stacks have three small units between them. Now, the entire oven will take damage, except the one wall unit in each corner of the oven, because remember, the fire damage radius looks like a cross. We're going to place one wall in each corner to block the safe area. Alright, now we're going to talk about pathing. How are we going to get the pigs into the oven? Pathing is when you click at a location and the game decides the quickest path to your destination. And this is the same for NPCs and the player. But there's a catch. You see, some obstacles such as walls and fences will have collision, meaning you can't go through them, and they're picked up in the game's pathing. So your character and NPCs will path around them. But there are other objects like ice flinger mags and statues from the potter's wheel which do not get picked up by the pathing but still have collision. Therefore your character and NPCs will path through them as if they weren't there will get stuck on them. If we try to get the pigs into the enclosure right now it doesn't work too well since the pigs aren't spreading out to allow all the pigs to get tightly packed in. As you can see they're all trying to go through the ice flinger mag. So we will be leaving two holes in the oven and adding these two corridors with holes on the end on each side of the oven. If we put a piece of bait for the pigs in the end of each corridor here and here, pigs will try to find the shortest path to the bait like this. But we don't want the pigs to actually eat the bait, so we're going to put one statue in each of the four holes. I used this statue which you get by default from the potter's wheel, but this one is small so it's easier to see what's going on inside the oven. Also with placing statues, walk into the hole in which you're putting the statue until your character appears behind the wall. In this example you can see Willow's hair kind of going behind the wall. When this happens, take one more small step and then equip a body armor piece. If you just drop the statue without equipping a body item, the statue gets thrown to the side randomly so it's not very precise, so if you equip the body item, it will drop exactly where you're standing. Anyway, doing this, the pigs will get stuck on the statue and be pulled to each 
outside of the enclosure since they think they can walk through all of the statues to get to the bait, allowing room for more pigs to get into the enclosure and their pathing spreading them out to either end of the oven. Also, the reason the two bait corridors are so long is so that when the pigs come out of their house, they will most likely see the bait faster since it's right in front of them. We also have another piece of bait on the other end of the corridor so that once they're in the oven, they can still see the bait. Since if a were pig can't see any food, it will start attacking the walls and that's no good. The bait we're using is a powder cake which you can make with a corn, a honey and two twigs. It takes 14,000 days to spoil, so yeah, it's pretty good. You can also use this to bait bunny men. Also, I will be adding gates to the interior of the oven so that you can access the corridors without moving the statues later. Now, we must learn something about obstacles which have collision but aren't accounted for in pathing like statues. They load into the area after things like pigs, meaning if you leave the pigs inside the oven walking against the statues and then you walk off screen or you unload the area, then you walk back on screen, sometimes the pigs may pass through the statue which means they can get to the bait. Loading and unloading simply refers to the game loads a certain area around the character which includes NPCs and like obstacles and once you leave this area it unloads. But there's a simple way to avoid this issue. We only need the pigs in the oven when we're going to cook them. So when you're not planning on cooking them, just close all of the gates which will mean the pigs will be locked outside of the oven and have no path to the bait. So they'll just walk against the walls which the pigs cannot walk through when unloaded. Alright, now let's do a quick test run with nothing in the enclosure so we can see what's happening. Grab a fire staff, set the scarecrow on fire and all the mini signs will begin smoldering. After the first set of mini signs actually set fire, count to six. Then after six seconds, turn on the flinger mag. During these six seconds, the rest of the mini signs will set fire, but we have a problem. As you can see, there's a stack of 30 mini signs in one spot. So the ice flinger mag sees 30 separate fires, so it begins throwing multiple snowballs at one spot. This is no good because the extra time it takes for the flinger mag to throw multiple snowballs means the signs might not be getting extinguished fast enough and they might burn to dust. Well, how do we fix this? Well, once again, I have a solution. Simple, you can put down two to four mini signs as bait for the flinger mag. In the example, I put down four, but two works perfectly fine as well. Specifically, one mini sign between each of the inner stacks of the 30 mini signs. And once you're in between them, you move it below the position by two small units. So why does this fix it? Well, flinger mag, when it throws a snowball, that snowball has an area of effect to power fires. So if there's 100 fires in a small area, one snowball will put all of them out. And flinger mags always target the closest fire first until it gets put out or it has thrown a snowball at it. So placing two to four mini signs slightly closer to the flinger mag and between the stacks of 30 mini signs will cause the flinger mag to throw one snowball at each of the closer mini signs, which has an area of effect which will put out the rest of the mini sign stacks. This puts them out significantly faster than before. And finally, we need to build the pig houses. The 12 by 6 enclosure allows you to build at least 50 pig houses, but you can build a few more if you want. In this example, I have 50 pig houses. Remember to build them as close to each other as possible so it looks something like how I have it here, but outside of the oven area marked with the carpet and checkered flooring. You want to make sure the pig houses are kind of away from the oven just in case a fire gets a little too far out and sets the pig houses on fire. Now let's talk about operating the oven. Let's open the two exterior gates to the oven and then leave the entire enclosure and make sure to close any gates on the way out. And now we're going to make them mad by wearing a spider hat. You could also hit them with an ice staff, but pigs aren't very aggressive in that if you hit one pig, not all of them will aggro onto you. So I like to keep equipping and unequipping a spider hat. And also to be sure that you don't get hit over the wall by any pigs, stand on the edge of the carpeted and checkered flooring. That way they won't be able to hit you, but you'll still be able to aggro them. So stay on the edge of that turf and just run back and forth between the two ends of the oven and then eventually all of the pigs will be packed in. Once all the pigs are packed in, take off the spider hat and wait a few seconds for the pigs to stop being mad at you and only once they stop being mad at you go through the side gate of the enclosure and then go behind the pigs and close the oven gates from behind. Depending on how many pigs you're trying to pack in you might need to push them a little bit before closing the gates. If you don't want to have to push any pigs just do just cook less pigs at a time so only do like 48 or so. Now go back through the enclosure gate and everything is ready for cooking. So grab a fire staff and set fire to the scarecrow. Now you just need to listen and count. After setting the scarecrow on fire the mini signs will begin to smolder and then they'll start setting and fire to each other. When you hear the first set of mini signs set fire, count to six, then after six seconds, turn on the flingomatic. Or you can turn on the fl flingomatic earlier if the pigs start dying. And that's it, the pigs have been cooked. You might have a few stragglers left if you extinguished the oven a bit too early, but they'll be frozen by the flingomatic, so you can just kill them with, with one or two hits, or just start the oven again. But it's best to try get all of them in one cooking session, in case uh, once they're unfrozen, they might try to eat the food on the floor from their falling comrades. And in case it isn't obvious, make sure all the gates are 
closed after you use the oven to keep the pigs from walking through the statues as they're being loaded in. So now let's go through some specific examples from start to finish cooking were pigs, pigs, and bunny men. So with were pigs, you need to pack the pigs in before they turn into were pigs because, because if you wear a spider hat with a were pig around, it will just ignore you. It will still try to go for the food. So you need to pack them in before the full moon and then wait for them to transform. Speaking of their transformation, were pigs taking fire damage doesn't cancel their transformation animation, meaning they'll be stuck in that really long animation standing still while taking fire damage. So ideally, you set fire to the scarecrow right as the full moon starts, right as they begin transforming. And where pigs have a lot of health, 525 health, so you need at least 30 mini signs in each stack to kill them, and you will need to count to 6 fully. If you fail to kill all of the pigs in one go, what will happen is you have to then start the oven again, and where pigs will prioritize eating the food on the floor than running away from the fire damage. Bunny men are like what I would call ultra aggressive, meaning if you hit one of them or put on a spider hat, all of them will instantly come for you. It's very easy to pack them in because they are ultra aggressive. Otherwise, be extra careful around bunny men because they're that aggressive. And of course, pigs and bunny men don't have as much health as were pigs, so, that, so they will die very fast. All of these concepts are the same no matter if you're cooking pigs, bunny men, or were pigs, just the amount of signs and the setup is a bit different, like I said. A few last notes about this farm is that it doesn't work during spring. This is because during spring, fires take much longer to spread, so by the time the fire has spread to the rest of the mini signs, the first set of mini signs, or even the scarecrow, might have burned. If you really want to use the farm during spring, you still can, but you'll have to start and stop the fires multiple times before all the creatures inside will die. Weirdly enough, the farm does work perfectly fine if it's raining or everything is wet, just so long as the season isn't spring. You can also use a triple gate setup like I'm using here. It makes packing in more than 48 pigs or bunnies easier, and if you really try, you can pack up to 52 pigs or bunnies using this method. And uh, that's it. I hope this fulfills all your meat, carrot, and pig skin and bunny puff farming needs. Leave a comment for which farm or boss run you want to see next. What the hell, the mic sounds different. Anyway, uh, thanks for Jazzy Games and James Bucket for the inspiration. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share, and also leave a little comment. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.